program, you probably have hosts who I don't know and I don't hear, many of them are excellent, some of them are not, who now make up names for stuff. I've talked about this before. When I used to do this, when I do it now, but when I started out and did this 10 years ago, I was often warned, including by friends in this business, don't do it. You'll get in trouble. So I give these left-wing politicians names, you know, like Diane Frankenfeinstein because she's so enormous, or little Dick Durbin, and that speaks for itself, and Schmucky Schumer, and I could go right down the line, but uh, many of you know, uh, are familiar with them, or like MSLSD, or PBS, the uh, pubic broadcasting system, Mark, Mark, you're going to get in trouble, and I would tell them, look, there's a kernel of not just laughter, but a lot of truth in what I say when I make up these names. And these people deserve to be humiliated. These institutions deserve to be knocked down a few notches. And that's why I do it. That's why I do it. Now, of course, there are people today on the air that do it nonstop. They think they're clever. That's perfectly fine. But I want you to know how this started. And that when I started it, it, was, it wasn't so easy. Because I was constantly being advised. No, no, you can't. You can't call that senator that. And PBS... That's a wonderful institution. You can't call on it. And I do, and I'll continue to do it. So we blazed a little trail there. Now, back to this. LeVar Burton, former actor. Is he currently an actor, Mr. Purdue? What, what, what does he do? I don't even know. He was Kunta Kinte, right? I seem to remember that as a kid. But since then, I don't know what he's doing. But he's on with Soledad O'Brien of uh, CNN, so that tells me he's not doing anything. And he's upset. Cut eight. Hat tip media. I go. You know, the CEO of PBS, uh, Paula Kerger said, uh, Kerger said that she nearly fell off the couch while she was watching the debate, and she heard that particular part of the debate. Uh, what was your reaction? Did you have the same reaction? I was outraged. I, I couldn't believe the man actually fixed his mouth to say that. Um, I interpreted it as an attack on children, Soledad. Mm -hmm. An attack Ooh. on children. It's an attack on, on children who um, come from uh, you know, a disenfranchised oh, uh, 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 you know, background. And yeah, to yeah, of course. callously, blatantly say that, that it's on the agenda to cut is just, it's not okay. Folks, if we can't cut PBS, at least to some degree, what the hell are we going to cut? I've talked about this before. What are there, a thousand channels on uh, satellite and cable TV? I don't know. I don't know. And for those of you who are concerned that some of your most popular programs will go away, they won't go away. They're commercially viable. And I don't know what this guy's talking about, disenfranchised, anti-children. Disenfranchised what? You turn on the TV and you watch. Whether it's whatever channel it's on. Oh, they're disenfranchised. Well, then why don't you allow people to go to movies for free? All you wealthy millionaires and billionaires in Hollywood, why don't you do that? We'll just call it public movies. Anyway, <clears throat> I've already said, I'll say it on the air. I will make the offer on the air. If PBS wants to sell me the rights to Sesame Street and they make a fortune off of merchandising, I will put together a group with me leading it, of course, and buy the damn thing. So Big Bird's not going anywhere. And as a matter of fact, let me extend that. I'll buy Barney, too. What do you think of that, Mr. Producer? I'll buy Sesame Street. I'll buy Barney, the, the, the purple dinosaur, and some of the other ones on there that, that'll make a fortune. And they do make a fortune from it. You think this is... You think the people who are behind these programs aren't getting wealthy? Many of them are multimillionaires, and we're supposed to hate them, aren't we? No, 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 because they're part of public broadcasting. They're not profiteers. Oh, I forgot. The only good millionaire and billionaire is a crony millionaire and billionaire. I forgot. But I want to make it clear yet again. You won't be disenfranchised, children. I will make sure that Sesame Street lives. I will make sure that Barney the Purple Dinosaur lives. These are institutions. But they don't need to be subsidized. And let me explain to you, LeVar Burton, how economics works. See, there are people who pay taxes in this country who aren't all millionaires and billionaires. And they pay it to a fat, bloated, insatiable federal government. And a little bit of that money goes to PBS. 
And these people who pay taxes, maybe they earn forty, fifty, sixty thousand dollars a year, are subsidizing people who make millions off of Sesame Street and Barney and these other programs. And it might be better that they get to keep their money. So don't don't hand me disenfranchised children. It's nothing to do with disenfranchised children. Stop taxing people who don't earn what you earn to subsidize people who earn more than they earn. And I've made this point before. (laughs) Excuse me. Now, the other good thing, if I buy Sesame Street and Barney the Dinosaur, these endless, endless, uh, what what do they call them? Uh, Membership drives. Donation drives. Oh, my. It's just endless. Please, please give us my... I'd rather have a commercial. That's right. I'd rather have a commercial than these endless drives where you have two stooges standing there smiling. And guess what? For $70, you get this plus a tote bag. What's the point? They're getting $450 million in federal subsidies. And they're putting the cup out there like they need money. Eh, we need your donation. All the hours of broadcasting we bring you for free. You don't bring it for free. Now, if I and my would-be partners own Sesame Street, we do away with all that. We just have some commercials. And by the way, one of the co- types of commercials I wouldn't allow to run on my, my programs, Mr., uh, Mr. Producer, you know what they are? These erectile dysfunction commercials. That's right. No erectile dysfunction commercials on any of my Sesame Street shows or Barney the Purple Elephant shows. That's right. Who's that idiot former uh, coach of the Dallas Cowboys? The guy with the big hair? No, no, he does. He's the owner, Jones, who does those commercials. The hell was his name? I can't remember. His, his name is out of my head for some reason. Yeah, the guy's doing erectile commercials. Doesn't he make enough money? They must be paying him a fortune. Uh, But I digress. Let me just continue to make the point. Who is it? Jimmy Johnson. That's right. God, how humiliating is that? But whatever. I'm just making a point. I want to settle all you libs down. Never fear. Mark is here.